Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Socially Distant Discover Nature. Today we're going to take a little bit of a close look at leafcutter bees, but first off we'll start with our very brief catch up. Pat has sent us in some interesting pictures of birds. Now the first one is a heron on a bridge near St Nick's that looks like it's just graffitied the bridge and is looking very pleased with itself. The second bird picture, taken in a friend's garden some time ago, is a bit of more of a mystery. Now, first glance, it looks like a female blackbird, but there's got this kind of strange light eyeshadow, uh, known as a supercilium, going on. So yeah, very curious. It's like a composite bird, it's like the head of a red wing has been grafted onto the body of a female blackbird. Didn't know, very confusing, but I put it on some, uh, I think it's like iSpot and some forums, and the general consensus is it's what it seems originally. It's a female blackbird, which is very, very curious. Curious indeed. Now on to bees. In a previous episode, I gave a bit of introduction to bees in general and the different types of bees, but today we're honing in on one particular area, which is the leafcutter bees. In terms of classification, the leaf bees belong to Megachylidae, which is a family within the Hymenoptera order, which is within insects itself. So we're talking about Megachylidae, which is quite a large family and contains not only leafcutter bees, but wool carder bees and mason bees, some of which you might be familiar with. Bees in the family Megachylidae generally have long tongues and they have what's called a pollen brush underneath the abdomen. So rather than say honeybees, which have pollen baskets on the hind legs, that's where they pack the pollen on, little saddle bags, the Megachylidae bees will store pollen underneath their abdomen on this swathe of hairs. Within Megachylidae, the family, there's the genus Megachyla, and this is where the leafcutter bees are. It may shock you to learn that leafcutter bees are called that because they cut leaves. I know. Shocking indeed. So, why do they do this? To work this out, we have to look at their life cycle before the hay fever destroys my eyes. Now, the first sign that you've got leafcutter bees in your garden might be when you're looking at rose bushes or other different plants and you notice little bits have been cut out of them, like this. There we go. Perfect circles, sometimes oval shapes. What's happened is a little bee, a leafcutter bee, has come along with its sharp little jaws and snip, 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 cut out the shape of the leaf. Why are they doing this? What do they need them for? Well. This is the female bees. Female bees will have mated, and they want to lay their fertilised eggs somewhere safe. This can be in rotting dead wood, plant stems, maybe even in the ground, sandy areas in some species, whatever. They will need to do that. But it's not just good enough to dump an egg, they need to make a little protected space. What the female bee will do is create what is called a cell which is a little compartment made entirely out of leaves that she has cut with her jaws, carried back in her jaws to the, the safe space, and crafted it into this little kind of room, little compartment. This cell or compartment will be stocked with a mixture of pollen and nectar, a little bit kind of moist, into which she lays the egg, and then it will be sealed up using what they call a terminal plug, or wall, if you will, and terminal plugs are especially kind of circular, again, circular, we've got a little leaf could have been, this isn't to scale, don't know the species, it's just pretty, just a demonstration prop, but leaf could have been, will have made a little compartment and will seal it up with a circular stopper to keep out any predators and sometimes security conscious ones will seal it up many, many times. The reason I'm making this video is because I noticed that leafcutter bees had taken up residence in a bee hotel I'd put in the garden. And you can tell this by the bamboo canes being stoppered 
by those terminal plugs made of leaves. I've got plenty of footage of the bees going in and out. One in particular, the underneath of the abdomen seems to be covered in a kind of creamy white pollen. So she'll be taking that into the little cell, into the little compartment, brushing it off, maybe mixing it with a bit of nectar, ready to lay the egg inside. Now within a, a bamboo tube, bamboo cane, you can have several of these compartments, one after the other, before the main terminal plug, the kind of final end of it is sealed up with many different bits of cut leaf. And that will be it. That will be the, the only sort of contact between the leaf could be and her offspring. She'll go off, repeat the process, but within that bamboo cane, over winter, well, over autumn and over winter, the egg will hatch out, the little grub will start eating, the pollen and nectar mix growing, pupate into an adult form, ready for next spring, when it will emerge. And it will do this by kind of biting its way through the leaf compartments and into the outside world. Generally, the bee compartments towards the front of the bamboo cane get the sun warm up first, so that means that the uh, little bees inside will be ready and awake and bite their way out, therefore the ones behind don't have to barge past. But don't get me wrong, the ones behind will barge past if they wake up earlier for some reasons. Weird temperature differentiation or something. They will quite happily munch their way through each little leaf compartment, regardless of whether the ones towards it, towards the front, have woken up or not. Once again, as with all things to do with bees, I find myself coming back to the Stephen Falk book, illustrated by Richard Lewington, which has told me there are seven species of leaf cut bees currently in the UK. And what I learned this afternoon was I am terrible at identifying them. So I can't really tell you any species information about all the leaf cut bees that you're seeing in the footage. What I can do is give you some tips. So key features when identifying something from a photograph is you need that organism photograph from multiple sides as many sides as possible. So you want a top-down view, you want a side view, you want a view of its backside, you want a view of its head. You kind of need the whole thing. And if you're missing some of those uh, key information, key images, then you'll find it very hard to work through the diagnostic keys in this book. Um, yeah, which I discovered. So I didn't take any pictures from the side, certainly didn't take any pictures of the head. Therefore, I kind of went down a diagnostic identification dead end. That's pretty much all I have to tell you about leaf bees in today's episode. Other than that, just before filming this piece of camera, I went outside to count how many little bamboo canes were occupied. We've got six of them in total, and goodness knows how many individual cells are behind. I mean, a cane that big could potentially have four or five, so there's, there could be quite a lot of actual eggs in there waiting to hatch and grow as pupa. And also I did discover the plant that they had been, or one of the plants that they had been snipping little sections out. It seems to be a rather kind of anemic yellow foxglove, but you can see very clearly the little shapes that have been cut out. If you'd like to make your own bee hotel, we've got a, a little video on Ig Sapien which shows you how. The only thing I'd say is, since making that video, we have discovered that you should really secure your bee hotel so it can't waggle around in the breeze and shake everything out and damage anything inside. So, by all means follow that method, but make sure it's nice and secure so there's no wiggle room. And place it in a sheltered, sunny location. Certainly with the, the mason bees, I noticed there were already mason bees going in, in little holes in the wall. So I thought, ah, good location, and I put my bee hotel in that exact same place. And so pretty soon, within a week, there was a tension on it. So yeah. That's all for this week. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you later. What's this? What's this? Who's a doggy? Who's a doggy?